Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this distressed mixed media tray assemblage. I got this tray recently from a car boot sale. It originally held a child's dress up game. So to start I'm going to take some black gesso and I'm giving the whole tray a good coat. This gesso covers particularly well so it will only need one coat. As you can see, I'm covering the sides as well as the back. And I'm going to let that dry thoroughly. I'm taking some homemade rust paste I'm taking the darkest colour first, applying it liberally. It's not the easiest to apply, so I'm using dabbing strokes. This gives a lot of texture as well as colour. Once the base colour has dried, I go in with the next colour. This is a rust colour and while it looks very bright it will tone down when dry. I'm not going for full coverage here as I want some of the base coat to show through. And when that's dried I applied a little of the lighter yellow rust paste. Now I'm applying a bit of teal spray to add a little bit of verdigris effect. I'm using a bit of artistic license here as you wouldn't get verdigris on this type of rust. Next I've cut out some scrapbooking paper and I'm using a distress tool to roughen up the edges. To age the paper I'm using distress inks. I want these papers to look particularly old so I'm going quite heavy with the distress ink.
I'm also distressing the backs of these papers, as this may show when the edges are curled over. I'm creasing some of the papers and enhancing the creases with distress inks. Next, I'm applying PVA glue to the backs of each section and applying the papers. I don't want this to look perfect so I'm allowing some of the papers to lift away from the back of the tray. I have a plastic cup with a small amount of water and I'm adding a couple of spoons full of Mod Podge. I want quite a weak solution. I'm brushing this solution all over the paper and the rust effects to seal the whole thing. Distress inks are water based and water reactive so it's a good idea to seal the piece. And again, I'll allow that to dry thoroughly. Next, I've already gessoed some found objects. These are cardboard letters, an old key, and some items I've moulded from polymer clay or resin. I'm dabbing some of the pieces with copper acrylic paint. I'm going to apply the rust effect on these, and the copper colour gives a slightly different finish to using black gesso as a base. On other pieces, I use a dry brush technique just to bring out some of the details of the mouldings. So I've decided to rust effect the letters in the key. Again, when this is dry, I'll seal it with the weak solution of Mod Podge and water. I've decided to cover some wine corks with some matte paper. This is a nod to an American artist called Joseph Cornell, who used similar items in a lot of his assemblage pieces.
I've also taken some ephemera and I'm going to use distress inks to antique the edges. Once I've decided where I'm going to place the ephemera, I'm going to glue it on, again using the weak solution of Mod Podge. I'm using brass eye screws fastened together to fix the corks to the top of the tray. I decided to add this steampunk die cut clock and that's just stuck on with regular PVA glue. Along with the Tim Holtz paper doll. This is a vintage tin I've found and I'm sticking it in place with double sided foam tape. The rest of the items have been stuck on with glossy accents. I find glossy accents to be an ideal adhesive for this kind of work. The only drawback is you have to wait several hours for it to cure. I'm using a lot of found objects as well as items I've cast in silicon moulds. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have please give it a like, and if you haven't already done so please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of all my future video uploads. Thanks for watching.